Hello and welcome to Darius Comic School and today I will make a special video and I want to say I'm pissed and I will take a new stance on this channel because um, if there is something that is very dear to my heart it is storytelling and it is proper story storytelling and I don't want to call myself an expert because writing something and doing something it is very hard. Um, it is very hard to, let me put you here, to write a book or a novel or to make a game. And yesterday I watched Dune and I will give you, um, I will tell you why I'm pissed. And look, this is a comic shell. I will um, tell you about Thor and some people will say, oh, comics are comics and movies are movies and you can not mix and mash those. No. You're wrong. Because all of my life, like, look at this. This is cinema scope. This is, there, there is a language of pictures and storytelling. And if we're talking about comics, we're also sometimes are talking about movies. And look here at Negan. And look here at Leon de Profi. So, the professional. So, there is something in me that movies and comics and games, and here you have the good old Darth Vader, and behind him Boba Fett, and here you have the good Tyrannosaurus from Jurassic Park, and right here there is something um, that is my trading card game that is not as... Ah, what do I say? I, have, I love Magic the Gathering, as you can see here, but I have, my, I have my problems with Magic the Gathering. And this game wants to fix it. But we're not yet there. As you can see here, it's a big, big pile um, of cards I'm creating. But this right now is on ice. But as you can see, we have here Sylvester Stallone as Lincoln Hawk from the movie... Um, what's the movie's name? Write it down below. And something like that. And I also make games. But these games, like my Noir Werewolf, um, there must be somewhere uh, an open case. But it's, it's, it's a lot of storytelling. It is a lot of feeling. And this is why I'm making this video. Um, and I will start in a second. I have also to say, um, I'm moving on from the Ed Piscor thing. Because when I was in school and some terrible events happened in the world like 9-11 or something like that like I wanted to talk about it and teacher said no we just have to do our thing open your math books open your English books and sometimes that's good like just to move on the show must go on and sometimes that's bad because I wasn't interested in math and in English class and in something like that I wanted to explore the way I wanted and sometimes that's, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. So why am I doing um, a video about June 2? So let me let me uh, give you a first um, after this long rambling rant. So um, this is not planned, but let's say I will give you... I was yesterday at the cinema um, and watched a movie. And then I will tell you, like, I went into the movie because the whole internet was telling me it's this huge masterpiece, number three. Um, I mean, I went to movie school and I had good grades and all I wanted to do was comics. Um, but storytelling is very dear to my heart. And I will pick in um, the fourth segment of this uh, video what sucked and why it sucked and why I think that Dune is overhyped and I don't understand how, how people can take something that is not that good and put it on a pedestal and say oh it's a masterpiece and the visuals because I wasn't feeling nothing and this morning I was browsing um, I have a I have a movie channel but it's not that big and I want to concentrate on this one and it showed me Lord of War from, I guess, 2012 or something like this with Nick Cage 
and Jared Leto, where he's a Russian arms dealer, and was watching the scene like five minutes long. And it's an arms trade somewhere in Africa. And Nicolas Cage has this two trucks full with weapons and grenades. And his brother um, tells, like played by Jared Leto, he tells Nicolas Cage, he said, look, if we're selling these guns to these guys, um, they, 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 they're gonna murder everybody down in that village. And Nicolas Cage says, we can't back up, like they, won't, they will kill us and we have to do the trade. And that was very traumatic. It was very tense. Like the stakes were high. I couldn't relate. Um, you could see the, the villagers down there, like women and children and soldiers up there, um, people without consciousness and arms dealers selling for a profit arms to those rebels. And that's a big freaking dilemma. And so as an audience like you're 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 thinking oh my god what's going to happen and um what's going to happen to the people down there how can um these soldiers do horrific such horrific things and and how could you be an arms dealer and take a profit from this while knowing that there's blood on your hands like five minute scenes from a movie that's i would say a lot of war was a good or decent movie maybe i gotta rewatch it maybe it's a good movie maybe it's not but maybe it's it is it is definitely very decent but you know what i mean i was so invested i'm thinking still about this movie and then yesterday i was watching dune and i rewatched dune one um a week or two ago before i went to italy it was pretty boring And I know that there's a critique that some movies are boring and I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan and I'm, I'm, I love the 80s, the 90s, the action movies, but I love also the film noirs, all the dramas. Um, I love a bunch of TV shows that you have never ever heard of. Like maybe like go and uh, watch like, I think it's called Darius Movie Channel. I don't even know how it's, how it's named, but there there. There's great stuff, and I love from 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 the very slow things. and And yesterday, I watched a, a woman that's a movie critic, and she, she said all musicals are trash, and La La Land is trash. And I loved La La Land. I loved Edge of Tomorrow. I loved La La Land. I loved Wrestling with Shadows with Brad the Hitman Hart. Um, and I loved Babylon Five. And I watched The Walking Dead, although it was a piece of shit. And it could have been so much better. Um, and I do like and watch stuff. And always like my heart goes. And, and, and I think a lot of comic artists or storytellers have this. Like you, you think there is something here. I love this. But it's not as good as it could be. And it's with games. It's with um, books. It's with comics. It's with TV shows. You think you could have made a better product and you and i we may be wrong maybe it's hard to make a good product and it truly is because i think you need a certain mastery but at the same time mastery without heart is just nothing it's spectacle um it's all icing and no cake it's 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 all show and no no nurture you know what i mean And that is what I felt watching Dune 1. And it was pretty much nothing. It was also a bit cringy. And um, I like the main actor, Timothy. Uh, what's his name? I like him very much. I think he's a pretty boy, but he does a good job. Like I like him in pretty much every movie he plays. Um, I'm a big fan of Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem. But like this stereotypical... Um, figures and how the, the plot unfolded I didn't like that and, and the thing I, I liked and loved was like Harkon and stuff and the battles and the Sarukar and at the end of movie one like um, the father dies uh, Leto Artridis dies and the movie ends or doesn't end there like they escape and it's pretty cool and I know um, while I was watching uh, the cinema on the big screen, I was a bit more invested than watching it 
in a smaller scale. I think that definitely adds to the feeling like watching it on a big screen um, does something with the movie. But I kind of, I kind of like, I didn't feel nothing. So Dune One was pretty dull, and I wasn't eager to see it, number two. But then everywhere on the internet and this is where i don't believe the hype i i think that's something that youtube needs to stop like i i see a lot of content creators that have a lot of subscribers or are trying to gaining sus subscribers and i know that it's biting and baiting and click baiting and drama and saying all kinds of stuff just to make you feel bad or good But like they're just churning out videos in the hope they can make some Google ad revenue. And I hate that. And people need to start looking through that shit and to pull back and to take back um, whatever energy you're pouring into these creators because they're just not telling the truth. And I'm very much into truth because all of my life... Um, has been a lot of pain and it, and it has been a lot of pain because of a lot of lies, um, a lot of maybes, a lot of ifs, a lot of hopes, a lot of you need, you shall, you must and not enough of solid, honest truth and integrity. That is what this video is about. And so I was watching June 2 and... Um, The picture started with some pretty cool scenes, fight scenes. Yeah, let's start there. Like, perfect. Like, we start the scene, and there is like Paul Atreides, and they're fighting against the Harkonnen. And like, I don't understand how how can you do it in the movies that you got like the Harkonnen? They're shooting Paul Atreides, and then he says, "Oh, we got you," and he gives him like this this one or two seconds window and then he gets stabbed or killed by Paul's mother the, the the mother boss girl of the universe and she knows everything and she's so cool and her son's a freaking idiot and can't defend himself and I mean this is not Austin Powers I mean Austin Powers was awesome but why are the bad guys stupid it takes away the stakes you make you can have A strong hero you can't have a strong hero without without strong adversity i can tell you stories from my life and that would make you cry because you would see the injustice or the stupidity or um, the want and not getting and all of that creates um i don't want to say emotion but it creates a charge and that kind of charge That is the amount of value that can be earned. Like the the bigger the bad boy, the um, or, or or the evil, um, the higher the emotion and the hero can rise. And also, the more we can learn from the journey. Like if you remember Star Wars, like Luke Skywalker, pretty much gets his ass kicked from episode uh, i would say luke skywalker original star wars like one two and three like um a new hope return of the the empire strikes back and the return of the jedi um he gets definitely stronger but he gets his ass handed to him in all three movies and he really struggles and he really loses and he loses his hand and he loses his friends and um he loses hope He finds out terrible things and I will spoil you at the end of the video but uh, about a thing in um, June uh, movie 2 but I don't understand like like in June 2 and even in June 1 like Paul Adridis in this movie he doesn't struggle the plot goes only from A to B and this happens And if he goes to the south, he becomes this tyrant. And if that happens, then this happens. So from the get-go, the movie starts. And um, I can understand that the Harkonnen are called Harkonnen beasts. And that they're maybe um, not the smartest human beings because they're like bred 
or inbreds or I don't know, like, uh, but they're not made to be honest and strong like the Atreides, like they're not royal blood. They are kind of trash in some way, but they're beasts. But how can they not be a threat? And then we see like the struggle, the battle, there are some cool scenes where um, Paul and his girl have this, uh, I'll call it a stinger or anti-aircraft weapon. That's a cool scene because like there, the struggle was real, Paul or Tredis. Um, they cannot they cannot penetrate the shields of the flyer. Um, only when the flyer shoots, I guess, they can penetrate the shield. So Paul has to run and bait. And here the stakes are high because he risks his life to uh, give his girlfriend the chance to take the flyer down with this stinger missile. And that's a great scene because there's a there's there's an equation you can you can lose this much and you can gain this much and so the stakes as you can see are high but then the rest of the movie like it's just like we're going from b to c from c to g and there there are no real plot twists there are no real revelations sure there are some cool scenes but um later like this this very praised scenes with, with the gladiators uh where this guy fights against three slaves it's i mean what is it have you seen gladiator with russell crowe or have you seen spartacus have you seen like movies from the 80s or 90s or from the 50s or 60s where stakes are real like this guy he's this uh young baron and he's a psychopathic badass and he fights three Atreides slaves and two of them are sedated or drugged up and one is not and he takes off his shield like I mean have they gotten so soft back in the future and it's just like it's 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 just neat I mean it's not much more than that and then <clears throat> Sometimes also like the cringe factor was really, really high because like, um, yeah, like for example, um, Paul Atreides is now the Muad'Dib and he gets there and <clears throat> he's in the South with all those fanatics and then he goes up there and he says, I'm the chosen one and everybody says, no, you're not the chosen one or we have to see and then they doubt him and then he goes up to one guy and he says, I know your grandmother and she died 13 days ago and when she was nine she lost her eye and now she's i don't know like he knew stuff nobody else could knew and then everybody accepts him okay okay that's another big scene like checkbox check check okay we've been here okay check we have all these scenes and okay it's a big fat book it's a thousand pages just dune number one But you gotta pick the scenes that really matter, and you gotta make the audience really feel something. And I did feel nothing. Because after that scene, I don't know, he writes a sandworm, and then the biggest sandworm in history shows up. And he kind of struggles, but it's not the kind of cliffhanger struggle. It's not the true lies struggle. It's not the Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not the Sylvester Stallone struggle. It's not the struggle. It's like, okay, he struggles. And then he gets it. And then he has the sandworm. Okay, and then we go to the next scene. And then we're in the next passage. And then what happens after that? I don't know, but th then like they're opposing the Harkonnens now. And um, like the Harkonnens just lose and get taken out. Like as if the Harkonnens are like, okay, let's say the, the Fremen are the baddest, biggest, baddest warriors in the world, in the universe. What's the struggle then? Why struggle? Like, I can you not show some Fremen getting their ass handed to them by some Harkonnen, like a real battle, like they win a bit, then they win a bit, they lose a bit, that it's a struggle, like you encounter one Harkonnen fighter that takes out two Fremen, and then one Fremen takes out that guy. You know what I mean? Like a real battle where, where you're thinking, oh my God, like look at that cho 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 choreography and look at that knife fight and oh my God, that was close and 
they, they, they match each other. No, it's not like that. It's like here you got the Fremen, and here you got the Harkonnen, the badass, and then... And it's gone. And then the Emperor shows up, because the Emperor knows that the Harkonnens are failing, and this big bad house full of psychopathic beasts, they, they just do nothing. They have no evil plot scheme. There's nothing like the, the Harkonnen Baron is smarter than everybody and he outwits uh, the Fremen and the Messiah and he outwits the Emperor. No. It just At the end of, sec of the second movie he just kneels and that's it. And the Emperor shows up with his Imperial Sadoka, the baddest, biggest fighters in the universe. I don't know all the lore but I think they're somehow created on a prison planet, indoctrinated, and they're raised like Spartans from the beginning to the end to be the biggest, baddest warriors in the universe. And they are the blade of the Emperor. So Christopher Walken lands on that planet at the end of the movie with all his forces, question mark, and then um, the Fremen show up with the sandworms, they, they blow up a mountain and then they show up with the sandworms and then that's it. And then uh, the Saruka want to fight with the Fremen and then there's just this uh, end scene where the Saruka stand there and I think, oh, I hope there's a battle, I hope there's a battle here. And then they walk into the shadow and then nothing happens, not a sound and then the Fremen come out. And I was just like, I paid money for this. Where's the battle? Where's the action? Where's the fun? Where's the where is where is more than just exposition? <clears throat> Because this is all this movie is. It's just exposition. It's similarly similarly as bad as Mark Miller's Batman Red Sun, because that comic is also just exposition and going from A to B to B, to B, to C. And that movie and that comic, they just want to tell you what you should feel and what you should think without you feeling or thinking that. And it's just so dull. And then the Emperor says something, then the Harkonnen boss says something, and then the Muad'Dib, the Sha uh, Chalamet, Timothy says something, and then he battles. And then in the final battle, like you think, okay, maybe we we'll get a cool battle. And spoiler alert, if you're not watch, a, watch the movie, click away because I will spoiler it right now. Three, two, one, okay. And then they battle. And um, it gets kind of close. And um, the main protagonist is losing the fight. And he gets stabbed. And then we get a close-up, both people looking themselves in the eyes like you've, you've just, just a camera on the heads. And... Yeah, then the bad guys, the bad guy gets stabbed by the hero, and you see it off screen, and then it's it's over, and the movie's over, and then somebody says, um, "Yeah, the emperor uh, kiss my ring, dear emperor," and Christopher Walken bows, and then um, the other houses of the universe uh, do not recognize Paul Atreides as the new emperor. So, I think there will be a boring part three, and. Um, I don't know. It just the movie's just a big missed opportunity, and I don't want to say that the Lynch movie is a better movie, but I don't know. This movie just looked so dull. It 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 wanted to be kind of realistic and grounded, and that's cool, and I kind of appreciate that, but it was also a bit cringy and. It's just, I don't know, I think this could have been a very interesting movie uh, or book adaptation. And I think they gave it away. They made, they created sometimes very great visuals, but most of the time it was a pre pretty dull movie. Um, one thing I have to say, um, I watched it and I wasn't bored. I was kind of intrigued and interested by the story but I was also disappointed so many times during that story. Oh, and here's a final spoiler. Some Somehow in the story, I don't know where to drop it, they, 
she drinks uh, like the mother of the hero and the hero both drink some blue water from the worms and they can now see into the future and in the past and they see that they are related to Baron Harkonnen and I don't know it has like no emotional weight like zero like this is like a huge or should be maybe a huge reveal oh my god we're related to the people we hated for a very long time and we fought and who killed my father but it's like he's your grandfather and I'm gonna kill him and after he kills him it's like oh now I'm gonna battle the emperor of the universe and then the Harkonnen nephew says oh I'm gonna battle him and then he dies and it's like just like what is this like even wrestling even WWE is more interesting than, than this done